All right, folks, this is a bit of a tutorial to show you some of the neat things that the Starry Night software that our district purchased for you guys to use. Um, some of the, the neat things that it can do. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like you to notice that it says, what, September 5th, 2020. CE stands for Common Era. Uh, it used to be A.D., 2020 A.D. It just means after Jesus. It's the common era now. 2,020 years ago is when Jesus was born. 10 o'clock p.m., this is the time at which I'm making this video. So this is real time set to Cincinnati, Ohio. So I promise if you go outside, take a gander at uh, towards the south-ish, You'll see something that looks like this if there's very little light pollution. Um, but some neat things to notice towards the south is, boy, that seems like an awful bright red star. It's called Antares. You might be able to pick that one out. Um, it also kind of has a bit of a curve to its right and a bit of a hook-looking thing to its left. And it's very low, obviously, towards the horizon. So maybe you'll kind of be able to pick that one out. This collection of stars, they kind of call a teapot. If you can see from here to here to here, there's a little handle and there's a spout. And the steam of the teapot actually kind of comes out there. It's neat to see what that relationship is. But this uh, you'll see when it says it's in the constellation Sagittarius, it's called the teapot asterism. The rest of the constellation is over here. But look at these two not stars. That is Jupiter and that is Saturn. So if you guys go outside and look almost due south, not too high above the horizon right now, I promise you will see Jupiter and Saturn. They're very, very bright. And as you look even higher up in the sky, what you'll notice is this software does. It puts those two little red semicircular arrows there. That represents something called my zenith, which you already know that definition, don't you? And a neat thing to notice is not too far from that zenith is a very bright star. It's called Vega. If you go outside and look basically straight up right now, you'll probably see that very, very bright star. Uh, another thing I'd like you to notice is just to the left of Vega, there's this bright star, which is called Deneb. You see its name showing up right there. And if we go down here, there's this really bright star, Altair. So Altair, Vega, and Deneb. Those three stars are very, very bright, very high, in the summer sky very high in the summer sky almost straight up so they're very bright very prominent they are what are called the summer triangle which is an asterism those stars are all part of three different constellations but since they're so darn bright they help you guide your way through the rest of the uh of, of the sky here but i'm going to keep rotating a little more to the east these are the stars that are just now coming above the horizon. Uh, sometimes they never go below the horizon. You see this little kind of funky shape there? It's it's almost like a weird looking kind of W or a backwards number three. That's a constellation you guys are going to get to know pretty well. And I think now as you're looking to the north, northwest here, that ought to look pretty darn familiar, huh? So there is obviously the dipper. These two stars are pointing to that star right there called Polaris. That is our north star. Um, and if you look, holy cow, it's due north. There you go. Um, it is not your zenith, though. Remember, your zenith is straight up. The only person whose north star is their zenith is Santa Claus. All right, the North Star is at his zenith. Um, but anyway, then you see the Big Dipper here. You see how its handle kind of curves and slams into that very, very bright star. This is Arcturus, which is, uh, whoops, it's very low in the west, okay? Very low in the west this time of year, which means, remember, things set in the west, so this star is not going to be visible very long. 
uh, here in, in the summer, in late September, because it's already about to go below the horizon uh, at 10 p.m. I mean, so there's that. Uh, and there again is my zenith here. So there's Vega. But anywho, and then I'm back to southwest, and there's this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, see if I can show constellations. Where are we at here? Show constellations. Boom. And here you see that very bright star. It's called Antares. Happens to be in the constellation Scorpius, which is Scorpio, which kind of looks like a bit of a scorpion. There's the Sagittarius here, and those two Jupiters and Saturn right there will show you, hey, those become a little more easily noticed, don't they? And as we look high up in the sky, almost straight up again, there's our zenith with those two little red circular arrows. There you see Lyra. Aquila and Cygnus, or Lyra is the constellation. Cygnus is the constellation. Aquila is the constellation. Vega is the star in Lyra that's part of that triangle. Deneb is the star in Cygnus. And Altair uh, is the star in Aquila that makes this the summer triangle because it's very, very high in the sky. And these, again, are other constellations that are just coming up. Remember, stars rise in the east, so Pisces and Pegasus are coming up in the east. These are more going to be more visible in the fall uh, than than the summer right now, because um, as the time goes on, these will get higher in the sky at the same time frame. Um, and then Perseus, you guys will know that here again. If I showed you the Big Dipper looking to the north, it's part of Ursa Major. Many folks never are able to make out the rest of that constellation. Those pointer stars point to Polaris, part of Ursa Minor. Uh, Draco is a constellation there. Cepheus Cassiopeia is the one that is that kind of weird looking W backwards. Uh, number three, or actually a, a number three, uh, sometimes it's a letter M. A funky looking W is what I call it. And then the tail of the Big Dipper, the handle points to this star called Arcturus in the constellation Buotes, which again is very low in the west right now, um, meaning it's not going to be very visible much later. It, it's very low in the sky. Uh, you know, at 10 o'clock at night when it's just getting dark anyway. All right, so what we'll do again is just remember certain what are called circumpolar constellations. If you remember those, those are the ones that are visible all year long. Uh, they're not seasonal. Okay, and what makes them circumpolar is they are very, very close to this star right there, Polaris. And if you go not too far from there, you see these few constellations. One is a very long constellation called Draco. Uh, and I think I misspoke in earlier videos. I said the North Star used to be in the Big Dipper. It used to be in the constellation Draco. That is uh, the uh, star that used to be our North Star. Let me see if I can... Thuban, this one right here. That used to be our North Star many, many years ago. All right. Um, but now it's obviously this guy. Uh, so Draco is a circumpolar constellation visible all year long. The Ursa Major constellation is one that never goes below the horizon. Parts of it do, but not all of it. Ursa Minor obviously never goes below the horizon from our viewpoint. Cepheus is one that never goes below the horizon. Uh, kind of looks like a home plate or a little pentagon. And Cassiopeia, that funky looking W. Those ones are the main constellations that are visible all year long. Please remember those. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is remind you of some significant dates. And what we can do is uh, let's look to the east here as the sun is going to rise. The sun rises in the east. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to March 
Let me see if I can get to March. The reason why I said March is remember that March, when the sun rises, March 21, that is what we call our first vernal equinox, which is what we just call the March equinox. And it's when we have uh, the start of the celestial new year. I will take it to a.m. See how 10 a.m. and the sun's already pretty high in the sky. So let me rewind that to maybe 7 a.m. Okay, and the sun is below the horizon now. So let me see if I go to 7.50. What does that do? Okay, good. See how it's right at the horizon there. There's the sun just coming over the horizon. That constellation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the horizon. Boom. And you see how it's coming up in Pisces right there. That's where we're at right now in the year 2020. But remember what I said, nothing lasts forever. The start of this celestial new year is when the sun rises in the constellation Aries. But let me show you what happens here. If I click that, now we've switched to what is called BCE. That's before Common Era. This used to just be called BC, before Christ, before Jesus was born. So 2,000 years before Jesus, what I just did is I just rewound the sky 4,000 years. Okay, just by that little click. Now we're back to Common Era, 2021. Now we're before Common Era. This is 2,021 years before the birth of Christ. And you see the sun right there in Aries. All right, so what I'll do, let me see if I can put the horizon back in. The sun, it looks like, is just below the horizon. It's 750. Maybe if I go to 850, it's coming up, and you can see there it is in Aries. So that was the point where they decided that this is the start of the celestial new year. That is when the ecliptic intersects the celestial equator. All right. And uh, that is <clears throat> what we call a March equinox. The shadow that separates day and night will go right through the northern and southern hemisphere. Sun rises basically due east. I mean, here, let me go back to common era. It's pretty much due east. Let me go back to 7 a.m. And I mean, it doesn't get any more due easter than that. Um, also, uh, if you remember, let me go to June 21. That is what we call our summer solstice or the June solstice. This is, uh, let me go back again to common era and let me go to maybe 6.53 a.m. right as the sun is coming up. Can you see what constellation the sun is drowning out right there? Let me go 5 a.m. and hide the horizon again. Um, and you see how the sun's going to come up right there in Cancer. That again is when June 21, when that sun rises, it's in that constellation Cancer, the highest it's going to go in the northern hemisphere. That's why that tropic line is called Cancer. Uh, let me put the horizon back in. And uh, let me hurry here, June 21. Let me go to December 21. You remember December 21? is uh, when we go to 6 a.m. Nope, how about 7 a.m., 8 a.m.? Okay, we're getting there. 8.54 a.m. Let me uh, see where we're at here and hide the horizon. Let me see if I hide the horizon. Oh, there's the sun in Capricorn. All right, that should make sense. The sun is rising in Capricorn on December 21, 2,000 years before Jesus, because this is when this stuff was first being published and studied. That's the constellation the sun rose in on what we call the shortest day of the year in the northern hemisphere, fewest hours of daylight. That's tropic is the farthest south the sun will climb on that day. So that's why that tropic line be called Cap became called Capricorn. All right, to put it back to where it is now, it's no longer. It's in uh, Sagittarius, but I'm going to keep showing these. 